Hello, and welcome to this Vivado Quick Take on analyzing device resource statistics. In this Quick Take, we will give an overview of the basic logic resources in a device, then how the resource utilization is measured, and finally an example of analyzing a utilization report. As can be seen in the device view, there are many different types of logic resources besides just LUTs and registers. Each resource type has its own measure of utilization that should be monitored. When utilization is too high, it can negatively impact Vivado's ability to fit the design into the device and at the same time meet design performance requirements. There are several fundamental resource types to consider, including the following. IOs and GTs. Early in the planning stages, it is important to compare IO and bandwidth requirements with available IO resources and their capabilities. Vivado IO planning is invaluable for this process. IO and GT utilization is decided early and usually does not change much throughout the remainder of the design cycle. Slice logic. Slice logic consists of the logic resources that implement the logic functions of your synthesized RTL and IP. Control sets and LUT combining make slice logic accounting more complex than other resources. We'll cover more on that topic later. Block memory. These resources are also a little more complicated to account for. The basic resource is called a block memory tile. In the 7 series, the block memory tile can hold a 36 kbit block RAM, a 36 kbit FIFO, two 18 kbit block RAMs, or one 18 kbit block RAM with one 18 kbit FIFO. DSP blocks. These are also two a tile, with the DSP block itself as the basic unit of measurement. Clocking resources. These include global clock buffers, MMCMs, PLLs, and regional clock buffers. Although clocking resources are easy to measure, architectural requirements make them a little more complex to implement than other types of logic. Now that we have an understanding of the key device resources, let's review the utilization reports. When using projects, these appear under place design. They can also be generated on demand with the report utilization command. The utilization report includes many sections with a table of contents. The first category we'll review is slice logic. This includes a breakdown of LUTs, including how many are used for logic and used for memory, either as distributed RAMs or SRLs. There's a total of registers and breakdown of flip-flops and latches. And finally, the slice muxes. The utilization percentage is given in the last column. The next section is slice logic distribution. After placement, the number of slices is available. The slice percentage utilization is typically much higher than the LUT percentage utilization for two reasons. One is that the placer will not tightly pack logic unless it has to do so to successfully fit. This avoids congestion. Another reason for sparse packing is control set restriction. The next section shows the logic LUT breakdown. A slice LUT can implement a single logic LUT with the output using either the 06 or the 05 pin. When two LUTs share common inputs, they can be combined to fit a single slice LUT with each using one of the 06 or 05 outputs. Here's an example in the device view showing the highlighted combined LUT driving the 05 output while the other LUT drives 06. Usually the placer combines LUTs at its discretion, depending on performance and writability. But sometimes, combining is fixed by synthesis. If combined LUTs appear in failing paths, disabling LUT combining in synthesis may give better results. Continuing on, there is a summary of LUTs used as memory, either as distributed RAM or shift registers, and they too can be combined. LUT flip-flop pairs count structures that are easier for the placer to pack. Here's an example. A LUT flip-flop pair fits nicely into a slice using the dedicated interconnect within the slice. The placer may then decide to place unrelated LUTs and flip-flops into the same slice. The last slice logic entry is the control set summary. As mentioned earlier, slice registers share similar control signals including clock, clock enable, and set or reset. Therefore, only registers with similar control signals can be placed in the same slice and other registers in this slice become lost. Here's an example to show how control sets affect packing and utilization. This clock enable only drives this single register in the design. The placer can only place this single register into a slice while all other registers are unusable. If there are many unique control sets, then packing is inefficient, which may lead to congestion or general placement problems. 
If the slice utilization seems too high, check the control set reports and see if there are many low fanout control sets. Try reducing small control sets using synthesis settings. Now onto block memory. Overall utilization is given in block RAM tiles with a breakdown of 36 kbit blocks and 18 kbit blocks. Note that from this example, there are not 270 18k blocks in addition to the 135 36k blocks. There are only 135 total 36k blocks of RAM available for both sizes. The remainder of the report covers DSP blocks, IO and GT related resources, clocking resources, specific features which are in the miscellaneous category, totals of all the library primitives in the design, black boxes, and finally instantiated net lists. So now we've covered the basics of device resources and their utilization report. Here's some important related topics covered in the user guides. The report utilization command options for hierarchical reporting and other useful features, the GUI utilization report, the clock utilization report, and finally the I.O. report. This concludes this Vivado quick take on analyzing device resource statistics. Thanks for watching. <laughs>